Thank God you're here. Today, we're gonna to start answering the existential question of why does Denmark exist? Yeah, when you look at it, Denmark is a small country with a nearly indefensible geography, no real natural resources, and historically, it's been surrounded by much stronger neighbors. We're starting with uh, Christianborg Palace behind us, which has been the home of Danish kings and is now the seat of the Danish parliament. So some of the most crucial decisions in Danish history have been made in the building behind us. But today we're going to travel about two hours west to Mid-Jutland and find out where one of the single most important decisions in Danish history was made in the town of Yelling. Let's go. We needed to visit Yelling in order to understand why Denmark exists because it's the site where the word Denmark was first used. While we were physically traveling two hours by train, we needed to mentally travel back to the 900s. Once we arrived, this was made much easier by seeing the reconstructed palisades that surround the site of Yelling. We immediately noticed there was two large mounds and a simple stone church in between. From this, it's obvious this site wasn't built as a fortification, it was built for display. So why was Yelling so important back then, and still now, to the existence of Denmark? The museum helped us to understand the answer to this question. Yelling is more than just a Viking ruin. At the heart of Yelling are the Yelling Stones. These are two rune stones that date from the 10th century, and they present the oldest written record in Danish history. The oldest is from Gorm the Old, and is commonly called Denmark's birth certificate. And the second is from Gorm's son, Harold Bluetooth, and is commonly called Denmark's baptismal certificate. To fully wrap our heads around the significance of the Yelling Stones and the site itself, we needed an expert. So we joined Morton, the director of the museum, for a better understanding of the stones and why they were placed in this site to begin with. But uh, let's, uh, let's see uh, what we call the birth certificate uh, of Denmark. It's over here. Uh, let's go on this side. Um, because, um, yeah. It's, it's only a stone, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, actually where uh, the first king of Denmark, Gorm the Old, says that uh, he's a king. And then he mentions his wife, uh, Thura, and saying this is the pride of Denmark. So a very good husband. And this is the first time, right here, saying Danmarkia. This is the first time where we see the name Denmark mentioned here. So this is a fantastic place. Um, and this is good uh, runestone style. Gorm says that he's the king and uh, he says that uh, he has a wonderful wife. That's how you make a real runestone and you write in this direction. Okay, so this is a, actually we, we, we could make an attraction just by this stone because how many countries have a thousand year old stone saying this is the country of, uh, we call it Denmark. So that's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. But then he got uh, his son, and he's a, just another type. <laughs> Let's see the big, big stone over here. That's Hell Bluetooth stone, and he was just another type, as I said. So just, let's walk uh, on the other side of the stone. Because um, the big difference uh, between the other stone and this is, yeah, this is much bigger. And uh, then he writes like this instead of like this. And that's because Hell Bluetooth, he knows that he's, there's new times coming. Uh, this is how they write in Southern uh, Europe, the Latin way, in this direction. Uh, so, but he still wants to show he knows where he's, he's coming from. So he uh, likes to uh, use runes. So using something from abroad, uh, but still okay, I'm still a Dane, so I use these runes. And that's maybe something that we still got in us uh, as Danes, being uh, uh, good in uh, reaching out and picking the best things and, and still knows that we are from here. That's may maybe something we still use. And uh, that's, uh, you could say that uh, these uh, rune stones are Twitter messages from uh, the Viking Age. And actually, you have to do something, you have to uh, say your name and then honor other people and Harold says Harold King made this monument for his father and his mother well, That's fine, but then he goes bananas. He says I'm Harold. Uh, that's not good style uh, uh, Using his own name as saying uh, bragging and so on. So this is a Twitter Twitter message And I don't know if I should say but it's more Trump writing a Twitter message in these days where he could do that but uh, <laughs> but he writes here that he has conquered all of Denmark 
and then he walks over here. So conquered all of Denmark and Norway. So he also has Norway here. And he uses drawings, uh, illustrations. This is a lion and a snake uh, twisting around each other. And uh, that's showing the religion shift coming from the Midgard's worm to the uh, Christianity lion, we think. And uh, the last, I hope you have uh, the last thing is uh, uh, the side where um, Christ is showing. And actually, on all the passports of the Danish, on the first side, you got this uh, Christianity picture, and that's the one from the stone. So that's what we call the birth, uh, the, the baptism certificate of Denmark. And that's where Harold Pluto says, I Christian the Danes. So this is uh, in very short uh, lines. He says, I'm the king and uh, I made uh, this country Denmark and I made the Danes Christian. So of course, this is a very special stone. And, um, and, and today, thousand years after, we actually, this is some of the only things, written things we have from the Vikings. So uh, in that way, it's a special place here. Uh, it's a beginning, a beginning place, you could say starting point from the nation of Denmark. As a Dane, what does this mean to you, this being the birth certificate of Denmark? Yeah, as a Dane it means a lot. If, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> on, on, on side number one at the passport. So of course it's, it means that we have something in common. We have, you could say, everybody could gather around this stone and say, okay, that's a part of me because we, he's uh, mentioning his uh, father, Gorm the Old, and uh, that's the first king of Denmark. So we have a line in the same family from Gorm the Old, the king, until today, uh, where we have Margareta the second. So in that way, it's a, it's a starting point until today. So it means a lot, I think. Uh, and of course, it means that uh, uh, all children in Denmark knows that uh, there's something called Hell Bluetooth and Gone the Old. Very cool. Yeah. Morton, thank you so much for yeah. teaching us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Phenomenal. You're welcome. After meeting Morton, there was no denying the incredible significance of the Yelling Stones and why Denmark exists. They show us where the nation state of Denmark first appeared and why we consider Gorm the Old to be the first king of Denmark. They also mark the reign of Harold Bluetooth, who made Denmark a Christian kingdom. But Yelling is a UNESCO heritage site for reasons beyond just these stones. The church, the pagan mounds, and the Yelling stones are all part of a bigger picture as to why Denmark exists today. So I know it may seem odd to have two pagan burial grounds with a Christian church in between, but that's actually what makes Yelling such a special place in Denmark. You see, this site is the crossroads between Viking tribalism and modern Denmark. It's also the crossroads between Nordic paganism and European Christianity, all right here in Yelling. It was all starting to come together now. Much like Christian Bork today, Yelling was the site of key decisions from these first Danish kings. Like the modern Danish constitution, the Yelling stones conveyed authority for those who rule. And like the historic monuments all over Denmark today, the burial mounds gave a connection to the past. But these Danish kings didn't rule from Yelling for long, as they moved on to other seats of power across the country. And after they left, there was one last transition to be made. The church that stands here likely stands on top of the old longhouse that was the great hall of the Viking kings that ruled here from Yelling. We know that because we see evidence of wood structures that date back prior to the age of the church. The church provides the last element that makes Yelling so special and remains a parish church to this day. This dual existence of yelling can even be seen inside. In the late 1970s, remains of a man were found under the church. It's believed these are actually the remains of Gorm the Old, who may have been moved from one of the burial mounds into the church. These remains are denoted with a silver marking on the floor of the church today. After a long day, it's time to head back to our home in Copenhagen, armed with knowledge and full of reflection. We arrived in yelling trying to answer a question. Why does Denmark exist? But we left with even more on our minds than just the answer. From our time in Yelling, we learned that Denmark exists because Gorm the Old unified Denmark and Harold Bluetooth Christianized Denmark. Both kings saw the world changing around them 
and they acted to ensure that their people weren't overtaken by stronger neighbors. To the south, Otto the Great was unifying and Christianizing the German tribes in the same way that Charlemagne did with the Frankish tribes a century earlier. Harold understood that this was the future of Europe, Christian kingdoms, not pagan tribes. Both Gorm and Harold chose to adapt, and in doing so, the nation-state of Denmark was born. And Denmark remains today because Danish leaders have always understood those two core lessons from their forefathers at Yelling. First, to exist, you must adapt to the world around you. And second, for a culture to thrive, you must hold on to where you came from while stepping bravely into the future. As we came to this understanding in Yelling, we were surprised how much it moved us emotionally, because as immigrants in Denmark, we can relate. For us to survive here, we must hold on to our American roots while we bravely step into a Danish future. This is something that we only truly realized once we became immigrants ourselves. You never truly lose your path identity or culture, even as you transition into a new one. This is something our ancestors experienced when they immigrated from Europe to the US. And I'm sure there are many other immigrants here in Denmark that experience the same exact feeling. Those who say we can only save Danish identity by walling off Denmark from the rest of the world are totally missing the point of yelling. Yelling teaches us that great nations and cultures don't stand alone, but they look towards the future and embrace the world around them. These are lessons that political leaders in America, Denmark, and beyond could benefit from. Yelling shows us that Danish culture doesn't exist in a vacuum, but it's a result of the influences of the world around it. In fact, if Gorman Harold believed that Denmark's future could only look like its past, there would be no Denmark today. What we took home from Yelling was more than just learning about Denmark's past, but it helped us to understand the core part of Denmark's present and its future, and where we both fit into it. I hope you liked this video and enjoyed going to Yelling with us. Please make sure that you like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and hit the bell for notifications. We drop new videos every Thursday, and we're so excited that you're here with us. Thank you.